Overwatch is absolutely chock full of lore. Be it relevant to the overall story of the game, or just little things about the characters like Symmetra and Lucio having beef. Most of it is pretty damn good and generally interesting. It's a shame we don't get lore on a bigger scale like we used to during the original Overwatch's lifespan. We used to get epic cinematics that told us all about the different characters and whilst yes, Kiriko and Sojong got cinematics, these were nothing like the old ones. You look at these cinematics, which are really good obviously, I'm not slating them and being like, these suck to bring back the original Overwatch, but you look at these cinematics and then you look at, let's say, the May cinematic, and you realise the new lore is lacking something. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the lore, specifically Maze, because I feel like while she's a hero who's generally ignored in comparison to heroes like Tracer and Sojourn when it comes to pick rate, she has some of the most interesting lore. I mean, it is pretty damn depressing, but I feel like it makes her feel a lot more human and gives her purpose. I'll get into it in a second, but first I'm going to ask you to subscribe and leave a like on this video, as I want to continue making Overwatch 2 related content that's not only entertaining, but educational too. Dr. Mei Ling Zhou is an esteemed climatologist who's not only fighting for Overwatch, but fighting for world preservation and a better future. She believes in tackling the climate crisis head on and is fully prepared to do whatever she must to make the world a better place for the generations to come. During her years in climatology, she made a name for herself by introducing cutting edge innovations in the field of climate manipulation that protected at-risk areas in Asia and beyond. Though many blamed the planet's escalating unexplained climate phenomena on new technologies, the rapidly growing omnic population and drastically increased consumption of resources, the true cause remained unknown. To find a solution to the problem, Overwatch established many eco-watch points all over the globe in remote critical locations. May was a part of this initiative, being hired to work in monitoring the climate at Watchpoint Antarctica. However, disaster struck when a raging polar storm battered the base and cut it off from the outside world. When the resources started dwindling, the crew, including May, entered cryostasis, a state in which the body is preserved until a later date where it's thawed out. Basically a pseudo-death where you don't need to eat or drink anything because your entire body is preserved in this frozen state. No, this isn't actually a real thing. Please, for the love of God, do not try this in real life. Nine years pass and May wakes up. The base had received an external message which caused the cryopods to activate again. She tried to communicate with the outside world, but the comms were down. The base, however, had accumulated news reports over the years the comms were active, which revealed that the eco point had been considered lost in the ice storm and Overwatch had been shut down. Nobody knew that the team was still there. It was at this point May wandered to herself where the rest of her team were and rushed back to the cryo chambers. Here, she discovered that the rest of the pods had malfunctioned. She was the only one left of her team to make it out of cryostasis. She wasn't completely alone though, she had Snowball, the Watchpoint's trusty droid. Destined to not let the team's research go to waste, she attempted to make contact with the outside world. During the storm, the base's satellite had been absolutely battered, but not quite destroyed. Over the next few days, May scavenged material to build an endothermic blaster, a freeze ray in small brain terms, and a makeshift antenna. She nearly completed it, but it was at this point that the base's last battery gave out. Snowball sacrificed his own power to recharge May's workstation, and as such, she was able to finish the blaster. Using the blaster's power, she was able to climb up the tower and get to the dish. Using the antenna, she was able to discover that the transmission the base received was from the big man himself, Winston Overwatch. This was the message that used to play every time you started up Overwatch back in the day, urging all former agents to get back together and fight the troubles the world was facing. This was enough to spark some courage into May, causing her to hike across the Arctic with confidence. Much to her joy, she she discovered that Snowball had regained power thanks to a portable solar panel she bought with her on her tracks. Where was she headed? Well, having received Winston's call to arms, she made her way to Watchpoint Gibraltar, where she met Winston and Tracer. It was from this point where she decided to keep going with her climatology work, with the encouragement from Winston. This was all going well until Null Sector attacked Paris. 
This is where she joined Overwatch on the front lines against the multitude of Null Sector onslaughts, cementing her status as one of the world's mightiest heroes. And that just about does it for the story of Dr. Mei Ling Zhang. Now, obviously that last bit was very much abridged, but if you want to see what went down when Mei joined Overwatch, I recommend watching the cinematics. Not only are they full of lore, but they're super high quality. Ever since these came out, fans have been begging for a full feature length film, and with shows like The Last of Us and Fallout and films like the Mario movie and the upcoming Minecraft movie, it's only a matter of time before we actually see an Overwatch movie or series. I wouldn't be surprised if it comes out, it's honestly really, really heavily anticipated. Anyways, thanks for watching. Once again, I'm going to ask you to like this video as it lets me know that you found these videos not only to be helpful, but entertaining. I think I might do a few more of these lore videos because they're really fun to make. So if you're into that, leave a comment telling me who I should talk about next, and maybe even subscribe so you don't miss that video when it comes out. Finally, have a nice day or night if you're watching this at night, and make sure to check out my other videos. Not only will I appreciate it, but you might too.